moon, our friend in the sky. I am not alone in my love and fascination for the moon, our planet's orbital that lights up our beautiful night. But what if the moon wasn't just a celestial lamplight to us? What if we had the option to live there? Hello and welcome back to Life's Biggest Questions, the channel that likes to dream big and small depending on the day. I'm your host Rebecca Felgate and today I'm asking what if humans could live on the moon? Before we get into this video I want to ask you guys if you would travel to the moon if it becomes a commercial possibility in our lifetime. I'm kind of scared of flying but that being said space travel is the ultimate goal and I feel like my life would be totally totally complete and change forever if I left planet earth. Think about it, let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below. Also if you guys want to connect with me on social media there is a link to my Instagram in the description box. Okay, the moon. It has been 46 years since humans have been to the moon. In 2017 Vice President Mike Pence stated in a meeting with the National Space Council that NASA will be sent back to the moon. Now I quote, not only to leave behind footprints and flags but to build the foundation we need to send Americans to Mars and beyond. Beyond. The wider implications of this we don't know, but we do know that in the late 1950s the United States government were thinking of setting up a permanent outpost on the moon at the cost of 6 billion dollars. Today that's more like 55 to 60 billion dollars. The declassified Project Horizon plan seemed to suggest that, in the research conducted anyway, it was concluded that scientists and astronauts could create a livable environment on the moon. So does this mean we can indeed live on the moon? Well yes, ish, but it would be a challenge. To live on the moon is to kiss goodbye to fashion choices and the freedom of clothing options altogether. If we wanted to step outside of our moon homes we would need a spacesuit. The atmosphere on the moon is very thin comparative to that on the earth which would mean it is super bright so super strength UV sunglasses would be a must. This also means that we might be exposed to cancer inducing radiation. Also making the moon somewhat inhospitable is the lack of breathable air. There isn't much oxygen on the moon which is a bummer for humanity. If you walked out of the safety of your moon hut the low pressure and lack of oxygen would likely make you pass out within 15 seconds. If you were left out there for too long the low pressure would start to draw out the fluid from your body and your blood vessels would explode. Load. Oh, one more issue with your soft feeble human body would be the wild varying temperatures of the moon which swing between plus 127 degrees to minus 173 degrees celsius which is in freaking sane. So all in all you see and understand the need for a spacesuit. Now we aren't talking any old throw over to live on the moon. Living on the moon means a rather hefty spacesuit and I imagine we might even need two, one for hot and one for cold temperatures. On our last trip to the moon in the 1970s the pressurized spacesuits given to the astronauts weighed 300 pounds so 126 kilos or 21 and a half stone. While these would feel much lighter in the low gravity surface of the moon they would feel very heavy in any gravitational chambers we have. That brings me on to a good question. If humans lived on the moon would we accept life at low gravity and adjust accordingly or would we try and gravitize our moon homes? Would we then live indoor life and outdoor life at separate gravity? That would be weird, but cool. Maybe. If we didn't create gravity chambers for our moon homes, our bodies would change. They would lose muscle mass and bone density, which would make returning to Earth a real challenge. If we did live on the moon, would we create fun low gravity sports like moon hockey or moon ball? Moon ball anyone? I'm here for moon ball. If humans did live on the moon they would need some serious psychological training. Life up there is nothing like life on earth. Even something as basic as a day is different on the moon. On earth humans and animals in general work around the sun. We sleep during the dark and live the majority of our lives in the day. Anyone living on the moon would also need to adjust to the lunar days and nights. A moon day is around 29 earth days. 14 and a half of those are in dark darkness and 14 and a half in light. Extended periods of sunlight and darkness can really 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 mess with a person's mental health and sleep patterns. It's likely if humans did live on the moon they would spend the dark days inside their moon homes and moon homes would have adjustable lighting states for better living. It is not only days that would be different for moon humans, weather would be very different too. We would have no need for umbrellas as it doesn't rain on the moon. There are however volcanic outgassings and dangerous solar radiation winds. If humans live on the moon we would need to stay inside our special moon homes when solar events happened, if not we would be frazzled alive. 
fun. Another key issue we need to talk about for moon living is water. The moon doesn't have liquid flowing water, we would need to mine for it, which might be a moon career for some. Water would be needed to drink and also to feed any plant life we can grow on the moon. The cultivation of plant life could also be another moon career. As water is harder to come by, we would need to be more mindful in the way in which we use it, which may mean the way in which we clean ourselves would be quite different. For the foreseeable future, early life on the moon would be basic, perhaps more basic than lives of early colonial settlers. We may not have any hot running water, so don't be surprised if there's no internet, TV or entertainment in general. Restaurants, movie theatres, malls, would any of these exist on the moon? Perhaps over time we would begin to develop creature comforts, but it may be centuries before we're able to cultivate things on the moon like we are able to on earth. I don't know, maybe I'm looking at it all wrong, maybe our first moon settlements will be high end. With Virgin Galactic charging $250,000 for space flights, it's possible that companies like Virgin or even Tesla could develop luxury resorts on the moon with only a few permanent residents to work there. It only takes 3 days to fly to the moon at the moment, so maybe it would be a great place to vacay. How would we travel once we're all set up on the moon? There aren't any cars or even roads, so at the moment the best way to travel is to cross country ski. Shoop, shoop, combustion engine free shoop. Just watch out for refrigerators. While living on the moon would have its challenges, I have to say that watching the Earth rise would be truly and utterly incredible. Seeing planet Earth in the night sky, honestly, I, I can't think of anything better. One huge final question if humans lived on the moon, and I mean permanently lived on the moon, then who would own it? No country can lay claim to the moon, although, why do you think it currently has six? American flag stuck in it. We know that humans get possessive. Would people be declaring war to own the moon? Would people born on the moon one day demand independence? So many questions, not all of which can be answered in one video. So what if humans lived on the moon? Well we could and can do it, it would just be an adjustment and we would need to be prepared for it. It would take a lot of resources too. Humans have evolved to earth, making our original home the best habitat for us. Perhaps we would start to evolve to be more in tune with the moon too. Two. Who knows? One little fact to leave you guys on Did you know that moons can have moons? Because they can, and they're called moon moons. And that, my friends, makes me very happy. So, guys, thank you for watching this video. Let me know what you thought. Would you like to live on the moon? Let me know all of this in the comment section down below. Also, while you're down there, be sure to hit that thumbs up button and click on the notification bell to be the first to hear more big answers. I'm your host, Rebecca Felgate. I'll catch you in the next video. But until then, be sure to stay curious, stay alert, and never ever stop questioning. <laughs>